Welcome to EV Comment. Here we talk about the latest news and the EV industry's exciting developments. If you are already subscribed, welcome back. If you are new here and like our content, please subscribe and like our videos. It encourages us to make more. As more electric vehicles hit the road around the country, hundreds of thousands of Americans are learning about car charging, installing home chargers, locating public charging stations, and how to avoid range anxiety. However, as EV owners plug in their vehicles, a concern is looming. Demands on the electrical system if most drivers continue to charge their electric vehicles at night. According to a new study by Stanford University researchers, EV sales could strain the electricity grid in the western United States if they increase quickly over the next decade and most drivers continue to charge their EVs at home. This would result in a 25% increase in net demand during peak hours. That might provide a challenge as the West battles to maintain power in the face of hot waves and escalating electrical demand. The first thing to understand about charging an EV differs significantly from filling up a car with gas. While the quickest chargers can fill an EV battery to 80% capacity in 20 to 30 minutes, most chargers are slower and require between 2 and 22 hours to fully charge an EV battery. That means that almost 80% of EV charging takes place overnight at the owner's home, when the driver may leave plenty of time for a charge and doesn't need the car. But the way electricity is increasingly produced is at odds with that charging pattern. Around 5 to 9 o'clock in the evening is the most electricity demand. When people get home from work, they turn on the lights, watch TV, and engage in other power-guzzling activities. In contrast, solar panels generate energy in the middle of the day. Therefore, the peak in electricity demand occurs just as solar is starting to shut down for the day. Researchers at Stanford University modeled residents' charging habits from 11 western states and then examined the effects that behavior might have on an electricity grid that is increasingly reliant on renewable and other clean energy sources. Once 30 or 40 percent of cars are EVs, it's going to start significantly impacting what we do with the grid," reported Ram Rajagopal, a professor of civil and environmental engineering at Stanford University and one of the researchers. Even if drivers wait until after the busiest times and schedule their car charging for 11 p.m. or later, they will still be utilizing electricity when renewable energy is least accessible. As a result, a power grid might require more batteries and storage and produce more carbon emissions. More EV owners switching to daytime charging, charging your vehicles at work or at public stations, is one answer according to the study. There will be less strain on the energy system and less demand for storage if electric cars are charged in the late morning and early afternoon when the grid has excess solar power that isn't being used. The analysis found that switching from predominantly home charging to a mix of home and work charging may roughly have the amount of storage required on the grid in a world where half of all cars are electric. The addition of workplace and public chargers has the advantage of making EVs more accessible to renters and those without houses. The study's lead author, Siovan Powell, a postdoctoral researcher at ETH Zurich in Switzerland, asserts that it is already necessary to make preparations for increased public and workplace charging. We're not saying that we don't have any more home charging or limit home charging, she stated. We don't want to discourage any charging because that's important for adoption. But there's a lot of money going into charging and we could make it as convenient to charge at work or in public as it is at home. The authors advise changing electricity price structures as another way to encourage charging during the day. Currently, several utilities provide customers with incredibly low electricity rates so they can charge their cars overnight. For instance, PG&E, a utility in California, provides electric vehicle owners rates of $0.25 cents per hour between midnight and 7 a.m. and $0.36 cents per hour between 7 a.m. and 2 p.m. Rajago Powell and Powell argue that to encourage charging during the day, the best prices should be offered in the middle of the day. According to Gil Tall, the director of an EV research center at the University of California in Davis, current EV users don't need to be concerned about their charging habits. We don't need to tap the brakes on adopting electric cars," he said. He contends that many of these problems will be rectified as more clean energy and storage are integrated into the system. But he acknowledges that EV's flexibility regarding when they may be charged is one of their advantages. It will be beneficial to switch to day charging by having workplace chargers available or by allowing daytime charging at home for people who work from home. Decision makers must put the chargers where the cars are during the day, he said. Your electric vehicle shouldn't be charged every night. Most of the time it is not required. Charging an electric vehicle at night could reduce the battery pack's lifespan. If you liked this video, hit the like button 
and send us your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. Be sure to subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.